Hey friends, this is Miss Kopak. So today we are going to do an informational writing scavenger hunt. And since this is something that we haven't done before, I thought it might be a good idea for us to try doing it together in this video. So on Seesaw and in this week's learning board, there is a link to a document that looks just like this one on the screen. If you have a printer at home, I recommend stopping this video and printing out this document. Uh, that way you'll be able to fill it out with me as we go through the video. If you do not have a printer, you will be able to fill this out after the video in Seesaw. So if you have a printer, stop the video and find this link on Seesaw or on the learning board. Print this document out. Okay, so this document says informational writing scavenger hunt. How can I identify the characteristics of informational writing? Directions. Read and analyze the text Christian the Lion. Look for the following characteristics of informational writing and record one thing you notice about each characteristic. So remember in yesterday's lesson, you learned about some of the things that can be found in informational writing. For example, there's a clear topic. So when we read the article today, we're going to write down what we notice about the topic. We're also going to look for an introduction with a lead or a hook. We're going to look for headings and subheadings and write down what we notice about them. We're going to look for main ideas in each section. We're going to look for information, facts and details, vocabulary and definitions, photographs and text features, and a conclusion. So again, we're going to look for these things and we're going to write down what we notice about them. So to make this a little easier for me, I'm going to type my responses, but if you have the paper in front of you, you can just use a pencil. So first, let's look at the article Christian the Lion. Here it is. And I am going to zoom in so that you can see the words. So the title, Christian the Lion, Should a Lion Live in a Big City? And this is by Todd Olson. So I'm going to zoom in so that you can see the words a little bit better. And you can read this along with me. Let's start with the introduction. One day, almost 40 years ago, two men named Ace and John went to a fancy store. They saw a baby lion living in a cage. The lion was for sale, but the men had no plans to buy the animal. Ace and John went back to their home. They lived in the furniture store where they worked. It was in the city of London, England. They couldn't stop thinking about the little lion, so they put all their money together and bought him. They named him Christian. Now this section's called Growing Up. Christian weighed only 30 pounds. He had fun living in the furniture store. He was gentle with the men. People came to the shop just to see the lion. But Christian grew fast. Ace and John knew the lion would be a huge predator. He'd have sharp teeth and claws. Ace and John realized that a shop in London wasn't the right place for Christian. But neither was a zoo. So where could he go? The men didn't know. And down here I see our glossary that says predator is an animal that kills and eats other animals. So we'll go to the second page. And let's look at the section called going wild. One day two people came to the store. They knew a man named George who had set a lion free in Africa. Ace and John wondered if George could do the same thing for Christian. George said he could, so Ace and John brought Christian to Africa. But Christian had never learned to do the things that lions in the wild can do. He had never hunted for his own food. He had never lived with other lions. How would he survive? George had a plan. A group of lions lived at his camp. George hoped Christian would become close with them. The group could then go into the wild together. At first, Christian wanted to stay with Ace and John, but he soon made friends with the lions. Ace and John knew it was safe to leave Christian. Saying goodbye was very sad. As they drove away, Christian chased after their truck. 
This made leaving him even harder. And our last section is called Together Again. The next year, the men visited Christian. He was 300 pounds. He was six feet long. The men didn't know whether Christian would remember them. But he did. When Ace and John called out to Christian, the lion put his paws on Ace's shoulders. Then he reached over to John and pulled him in too. He was hugging them. When Ace and John said goodbye to Christian again, they cried. They would miss the lion forever, but they knew he would be happy in the wild and he would never live in a cage again. If we go back up to the photographs, we have a caption here that's called Sweet Greeting. John and Ace's reunion with Christian was captured on film, and it is one of the most popular YouTube videos ever posted. Oh, wow. Maybe you can search for that on YouTube sometime. All right. So now that we have read the article, let's look at our chart that we have to fill out. I'm going to zoom in on the chart just to make it a little bit bigger for me to type. So we're going to start with the topic. Thinking about our Christian the Lion article, what was this article about? Think about it a second. This article was about who? It was about a lion, a lion named Christian. So for what did we notice about the topic? We could say that we noticed that it was about a lion or it was about a lion named Christian. So I'm going to write down that um, it was about a lion named Christian. You can go ahead, you can write the same thing, or maybe you have your own way of saying it. And I'm going to put this right in this section. So if you have your paper in front of you, you can go ahead and pause the video and write down what you noticed about the topic. Maybe it's similar to mine, maybe it's a little bit different. Next, we're going to look at the introduction. So let's go back to the beginning of the article. And here is our introduction, the beginning of the story. Remember, sometimes authors might start with a question. They might start with a description. They might start with a really interesting fact or story. They might start with um, a loud sound, something to grab your attention. So you can pause this video and reread the introduction to yourself. When you're finished rereading the introduction, hit play. Okay, so if you reread this introduction, you will notice that it started out a certain way. It didn't start out with a question. It didn't start out with a loud noise. It was telling us about something. It was telling us kind of an interesting little story, an interesting little fact that these men had gone to a store and there was something unusual for sale at the store. A lion was for sale at the store. I've never seen a lion for sale at a store, so that's definitely grabbing my attention. It's pretty strange. So on the graphic organizer, I'm going to write down that for the, the lead or the hook, the introduction, I noticed that they gave or um, they gave an interesting fact or a surprising fact. That's what they did to start the story to kind of grab our attention. They gave a really interest, interesting fact. You can write down what you noticed about the beginning of Christian the Lion. Now we're going to look at the headings and subheadings. So let's look back at the article. We see we have up here Christian the Lion. We have a subheading growing up. On the next page, we have two more headings, going wild and together again. So what did you notice about those headings? Maybe you notice something about their color. Maybe you notice something about their size. 
Maybe you notice something about their length. Go ahead and pause the video and write down what you notice in this box right here. I'm going to write down that I noticed that the headings were short. A heading is not a full long sentence. Headings are usually just maybe like three, four um, words. They're not, it's not a full sentence. They're really short. So that's something that I noticed about the headings and subheadings. What did you notice? Make sure you write down what you noticed in on your paper. Okay, next we're gonna look for main ideas. So there were three sections here. We had the growing up section, we had going wild, and we had together again. So let's reread those sections and we're gonna think about the main idea. What was the big thing the author was trying to tell us in that section? So let's start with growing up. Pause the video and reread this section, then hit play when you're done. Okay, so if you reread the growing up section, you will have seen how this section was talking about Christian uh, living in the store when he was little. He was 30 pounds, but then he was growing really fast and they knew he was going to be a big, dangerous predator, so he couldn't stay in the store. Um, so the author is basically trying to tell us that Christian was growing up. He's growing up fast. So that's what I noticed about the main idea in the first section. So you can write down the same thing with me next to number one. We can write down that we noticed that Christian, I'm going to make this a little smaller, Christian was growing fast. And I'm going to change my size here so that it fits right next to number one, that first section. That's the main idea that I noticed, that Christian was growing fast. Then we're going to go to the second section. So when you're ready to read the section going wild, Pause the video and reread it on your screen, then hit play when you're done. So think about the section going wild. What was this section mostly about? So in this section, we had Ace and John, and they knew Christian couldn't stay in their store anymore. So they met a man named George, and that man helped them do something in this section. And what was that thing that George helped them do with Christian? So the big thing that the author's trying to tell us in this section, Going Wild, is that they had to take Christian into the wild. They had to release him, let him go live with other lions. So maybe you have a different way of saying that. I'm going to write down that I noticed the main idea was that they um, released Christian into the wild. So that means they let him go free. They weren't going to keep him as a pet anymore. Maybe you could write that a different way in your own words. And then we're going to go to the final section. Go ahead and read the section together again. Pause the video when you're finished reading it, hit play. So this section together again, uh, remember they had let Christian go into the wild. So the next year they came back to visit him and it was a big reunion. They hugged Christian. Christian remembered who Ace and John were. So they had this big happy reunion where they got to see each other again. So this section together again was about when Ace and John went to go visit Christian again. So that's what I noticed about the main idea, that the main idea is telling me that Ace and John visited Christian. Maybe you have another way of saying that. 
So go ahead and write down what you noticed about the main idea. Next to number three. You can pause the video if you need to, especially if I'm going too fast. All right, the next section. What did you notice about the information, facts, and details? So think back to what we read today. What did you notice about the things that they were telling us? They weren't telling us silly stuff. They weren't telling us um, things about, you know, Africa. They weren't telling us uh, about giraffes and elephants. They seemed to be pretty focused on their topic here. They were telling us just about Christian. So that's something that I noticed that I'm going to write down that um, there were true facts. Everything was true. It wasn't silly, make-believe stuff. It was all true information. There were true facts, and um, it was all about Christian. They didn't get off topic. Everything was all about Christian. So go ahead and write down what you noticed about the facts and the details in the story. All right, the other section that we need to fill out is vocabulary and definitions. Now, remember, usually in a nonfiction uh, article or book, those important words are going to be shown in bold print. So let's look back through the text. I don't see any big important words on this page. Let's go to the first page. Uh, do you see it? I see it. What do you notice about this word? It doesn't look like the others. And I also see it down here too. So write down in the vocabulary, vocabulary section what you notice about this important vocabulary word. Maybe you notice something about the way it looks. Maybe you notice something about where it's at. I'm going to write down that it was in bold print. I'm also going to write down that it was in the glossary. That's what that yellow section was in the article, the glossary. So I noticed two things about that. Maybe you noticed the same thing. Maybe you noticed something different. Next, we're going to look at the photographs and other text features. So we're going to look at the photographs to see what the photographs are showing us. We're also going to see if there's any other text features. You know, did they give us a map, a timeline? Did they give us a diagram, captions? Let's look back at the article and find out. So here we have a photograph. Do you notice anything about that photograph? And let's look here. Do you notice anything here? I don't see any maps or diagrams or timelines or table of contents or index, any of those text features. But I do see another text feature. Do you see it? So on the next section of your chart, you're going to write down what you noticed about the photographs and text features. So you can pause the video if you need to. I'm going to write that the photos showed um, uh, Christian. That's the lion. And I'm also going to write down that I noticed that there was a, um, a caption. One of the photos had a caption. Okay, finally, we're going to look at the conclusion. The conclusion is how the author ended 
the article. So let's look at the ending. So when we look at our ending, we're going to look at like the last paragraph, see how they ended it. So go ahead and reread this last paragraph. See how the author ended it. So think about that ending. They didn't end by like asking us a question. They didn't end by telling us to do something like we should go out and buy a lion. They ended by telling us about how Ace and John said goodbye to Christian and how that they were sad saying by saying goodbye to him. Um, but they were also happy. Um, they were uh, knew Christian would be happy in the wild and that he would never be in a cage again. So it was kind of like a happy ending. Even though they were sad to say goodbye, they knew that they were doing the right thing. So this ending kind of wraps it up with like a happy ending or a hopeful ending that um, they did the right thing by letting Christian go back into the wild. So for the conclusion, I'm going to write down that I noticed um, it was a happy or hopeful ending. Maybe you have another way of saying it, or maybe you notice something else about the ending. Go ahead and write down what you noticed in the final conclusion box. All right, so if you wrote uh, your responses in the boxes on paper, when you get into Seesaw, you can click on the add response button and you can go to the fourth page of the document and it says if you completed your chart on paper upload a picture of it here so you can click the camera button take a photo of your uh, paper and upload it right here to this page then hit the green check mark if you did not do this on paper then you're going to want to get into seesaw and fill out the chart just like I did here. Of course, you can use your own sentences. Think about what you noticed. So thank you for joining me today, third graders. Hopefully you enjoyed that article. Maybe if you enjoy looking at YouTube videos, maybe you can try and find that video of Christian the Lion. That might be interesting to see. I know I want to see it. See you next time, third graders. Bye.